Is a caloric deficit necessary for weight loss? I've asked you before if it's optimal, and we've cleared that up that no, because your body's not math. Correct. But is it necessary? No. Oh, my God. I love you, and I knew you were going to say that. No, it, it's not. This and is it, so big. It's so big. People do not get this. I get pushback, endless pushback yeah. on it. So in a perfectly healthy individual with every nutrient necessary, with every you know micro and macronutrient perfect, maybe a caloric deficit is necessary for someone to actually lose weight. But that's not humans. That's not who we are as people. The the vast majority of people, the, the norm in this country is sick. Right. Two thirds of the population is overweight. Well, if you're producing things in your gut because your bacteria are out of balance and you go into a caloric deficit, you may actually start gaining weight in a caloric deficit. I have tons of people that come to me desperate to lose weight who are eating 500 to 700 calories a day and they're gaining a pound a week. If caloric deficit was necessary, then they would be losing weight. And that's just not true. When we get into it, these people are complete disasters. Their their health is just all over the place. They may have toxic exposure. Their, their microbiome is completely out of balance. They have nutrient deficiencies all over the place. And they're just unwell individuals. And a lot of these people, we start increasing their caloric intake, put the nutrients back in their system, and they start losing weight. And they're like, what in the world? I had no idea. Like, that's just the way it is. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm telling you from a clinic standpoint, from seeing patients, people do not have to be in a caloric deficit to, to lose weight. I get it. Like, I, I don't. Obviously, from the on the fitness and personal coaching side of things, I would see the exact same thing, Yeah. right? It, nothing clinical, what I was seeing, but I can tell you that there were hundreds of women in particular over 40 that are like eating right. seven to 900 calories a day. And yep. people are like, that. they're not eating that. That's a lie. It's like, no, they really are eating that. I can yep. promise you that. Their first meal isn't until like one o'clock and it's like a fucking protein bar that's really just a bunch of sugar while they're on the run. I right. promise you. And we would do exactly that. Feed them, right? right? Start with- Real food. Real food, right? Mm -hmm. Not a bar, being conscientious about what they were eating, being focused, allowing themselves to like rest and digest mm -hmm. instead of being in fight or flight while they were trying to digest their food so Correct. that they weren't just jacking up their gut microbiome, Correct. right? And they would lose weight. Yep. So I need to like put that to rest here and now. It is absolutely not necessary. No, not for everyone. Maybe for some people. Yeah. I'm not saying that this like, is perfect, absolute. Like you said, but someone that's like kind of just not all fucked up. So maybe Correct. in your 20s. Correct. Right? Like you can't just eat more than what right. you're expending in energy. And right. yeah, you may need to do that. But that's if all of other things have not and, been disrupted. And if you're eating 15,000 calories a day and gaining 100 pounds a year, I mean, okay, <laughs> yeah, you need to slow down a little bit there, Jack. But I mean, <laughs> let's let's be honest. Like- most Nothing people are not if you're Jack. Yeah, who sorry, sorry Jack. Um, <laughs> so I, that's I'm sorry. That I it's it. just not true. And from a from a as a practitioner seeing people like no, it's it's not accurate. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be. And I think maybe that gets perpetuated too like in the personal training world, right? Or in like in a gym where you have a lot of people that are just basing everything they know on kind of bro science. They they're, they they're, learned about it in a book when right. they got their degree, maybe. right? Yeah. Maybe so. And there but it's because because in the world of healthcare, personal training, medicine, like they're still perpetuating this false idea that Calories in, calories out is how you gain or lose weight. Mm -hmm. And that's not accurate because in that model, what it's saying is it's saying that 100 calories is 100 calories. So if you get 100 calories from soda, that's exactly the same as 100 calories from broccoli. And that is not, those are not the same calories. Well, no, I mean, common sense would tell you that, but, right? Like you don't have to know anything. 
Right. But that's what they're, this is what you're buying into. If you're buying into the calories in calories out model, you're buying into the, I can get a, my 2000 calories a day from all from sugar, or I can get my 2000 calories a day from real foods that I should be eating. And if I just decrease my sugar intake, I'll lose weight. That's not accurate. That's not accurate. You can decrease your sugar intake. You're just going to slow down. Maybe you're going to slow down your weight gain, Mm -hmm. but you're still going to be gaining. Mm -hmm. And a word of caution along those lines to the, if it fits your macros folks, right? Like that's a, that's a big movement. It's, and it works for. For some and not for everyone. It works for some. And it works primarily for people, again, that are like in their twenties, haven't done a whole lot of metabolic or hormonal kind of ha- wreaked well, havoc on their system yet because enough years haven't passed by correct. for them to do that. And, and, and we're not even I, we're not even touching the hormonal aspect of how that affects weight gain mm-hmm. and whether or not you're running, you know, estrogen out the proper pathways or if you're aromatizing estrogen or, or uh, testosterone or if you're you're sending testosterone into the 5 alpha or 5 beta pathway to get rid of it like I can get down a rabbit hole here, but I don't think it's necessary because like all of this stuff matters. Your cholesterol could be way too low and you don't actually realize that your cholesterol is low. Then your everything is out about like there's way more to this than just calories in calories out. Okay. So since you brought it up though, I do kind of want to dig into that. Oh, we're going to parlay. (laughs) We are. We're going to double down right here. (laughs) All right. Swear How much you got it's, on the table? It's eights. We're splitting eights. I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. So a very simple kind of talking point of mine has always been it is not calories in, calories out. It is hormone balance and gut health. Yeah. That are your two big primary focuses. Yep. Right? Am I right? That's right. I mean, it's, it's two foundational aspects to someone's overall health. If your gut is not balanced and is not functioning right – you are going to have a more difficult time breaking down foods to get the nutrients out. It's easy to get calories out. That's not the hard part. The hard part is making sure that you get adequate levels of magnesium and calcium and vitamins and minerals and all these other things. Like that's the stuff that's that's very difficult to get. And so if your gut isn't functioning properly, and I'm talking by gut function, I'm talking about your not not only microbiome. Everybody wants to think, oh, my microbiome or my gut health isn't right. Throw probiotics at it. Oh. But what if your gut's inflamed? Right. You got to put the fire out before you put probiotics in there. Um, what if your enzymes are out of balance and you're not actually able to break down your food the way that you're supposed to? What if you're not making enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach to break down food the way that you're supposed to? What if your gallbladder isn't or your liver isn't making enough bile? for your gallbladder to store? What if your gallbladder has become dysfunctional and you're not actually able to expel the bile? What if your pancreas isn't functioning properly and you're not putting enough insulin in there? What if the pH of that stomach is is high enough that you're taking um, you know, an antacid, which alters the pH, which now you're not really going to absorb any nutrients from. You're going to get calories, but you're not going to get the nutrients from the food as it right. moves through your digestive system. And that's just some gut stuff. What if you have a protozoa that's in there, some sort of parasite? You know, when we say parasites, everybody jumps right to, you know, worms and tapeworms, and that's not it. You can have protozoa. You can have things like giardia in there. You can have blastocystis. You can have all of these different things that are in your gut that are disrupting your body's ability to absorb nutrients into it. That's the stuff that matters. You've got to get that stuff right. And you do that differently based on a person's other exposures. And you brought up hormones. Well, if your gut's not functioning right, you're not absorbing nutrients the way that you're supposed to. Well, now your manufacturing process and your manufacturing plant of your body is all off. So now you're not going to make hormones properly. You're not going to convert them the way that they're supposed to be converted. Like it just keeps snowballing. So when people listen to that, I know that they're like brains explode. Then they're like, well, shit, then where do I even start? Yeah. Yeah. Start having the conversation with with someone that is knowledgeable in this type of stuff to say, okay, yeah, I actually have a have a have a I need to I need to talk to someone, I need to recruit someone. Or better yet, start having the conversation with yourself. Mm-hmm. Start yeah. self-reflecting and saying, Am I the best version of me that I could be? Do I do I poop every single day? Do I feel good after I go? Do I sleep well? Like, start having those conversations. Do I have energy? 
Or am I run down by the end of the day? Am I, am, am I able to wake up and, and actually do things every single day? Do I have this woe is me? Do I have a little bit of depression? Do I have a little bit of anxiety? We're talking about gut function. It affects all of that stuff. <laughs> all of it. And so that's just gut function. Then you've got everything else that disrupts overall health too. So it gets it gets deep. And it gets really wide in possibilities very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where most people get lost as they become overwhelmed. They're like, well, I can't possibly do all this. You can if you identify what's actually wrong. And you have to first identify what is lies that you're buying into. Right. (laughs) Right. In the information world. It's like, I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there. I get it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like why I do this show, why you and I sit down and have these brief conversations to just kind of help do our part in dispelling some of that misinformation. Right. Right. So you have to first accept that, okay, what I've been being told. May not be true. May not be true and most likely isn't. Correct. If it's coming from the fitness world, it's probably not true. Maybe. <laughs> like it's it's possible. Right. I mean, are, are there people out there that are helping lots of people? Sure. But I, I, I figure out that we undo a lot of misconceptions in the office. Mm-hmm. Yep. When I saw it, I mean, I was I'm in the fitness world for, sure. well, you know, 15 years. And the truth was, it was like there's a very low barrier to entry in that industry. You don't have to know a whole lot. You can go to a weekend course and all of a sudden sure. you're a personal trainer and sure. you've got someone's health in your hands, which is always kind of like alarming to me. Right? That's <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but at least they're trying. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta say at least they're trying. They're noticing, Hey, I, I would like to help someone mm-hmm. and they're trying. So oh, yeah. I, I got to give them props for at least trying. Yes. And then continuing to seek out. Correct. Deeper More knowledge. information. Yeah. Right. That's it. There you go. Okay. So let's wrap it up there. Let's give people, because I like to give them some takeaways about like, okay, here is what I can do beyond having that conversation. Things that, that people could stop doing, like eating while they're distracted, eating while they're standing up. That's a big one for me. Like you yep. always, you can't ever eat my rules. And this is even in our family. It's like, you don't ever eat from a package and you don't ever eat while you're standing up. Like sit down and pay attention to your food. Yep. Right. Cause you're not digesting your food properly. Right. Is there some quick things like that? Easy things that people can do just like today. They're like, oh, okay. I can start doing some of that. Like people can sit down and eat. Yeah. And not be distracted. Yeah. Um, actually one of the big things, well, you say simple. I don't know how simple it is, but it's extremely important, okay. is to actually figure out how many calories you're consuming in a day. Mm-hmm. Most people have no idea how many calories they're actually consuming in a day. If you can get a handle on that, you can get a handle on your health. I, I can't express how important that is. There are many people that come in and they're wanting, like with the whole weight loss thing, they're wanting to lose weight. And I ask them, well, how many calories do you eat a day? And they're like, oh, I don't know, about this much. I'm like, I'll tell you what, between now and when we meet again, I need you to go for seven days and record the amount of calories you consume for seven days in a row. And I I do seven days because you can't just follow somebody for one day and say that that's what they eat all the time. No, I always did that too, because in a Wednesday looks a lot different for a lot of people than a Saturday or a Sunday, right? It's like you got to have a full week. You got to have a full week. And then you take those total calories, you divide it by seven. There's your average Mm -hmm. of what you're getting on a daily basis. And then let's start from there. Let's figure out from there where to go. And most people, they're actually consuming significantly less calories than they think they Mm -hmm. are. And then I have to start talking, pointing out the things that we just talked about of, well, you're not losing weight because you're consuming, or you're not gaining weight because you're consuming too many calories. You're consuming too few. Yeah. And they're like, what? Yeah. I get it. But your body is like under this chronic stress state of kind of trying to just survive. Yep. Right. Your body isn't, if you think about it, just very logically, it's like if your body is you know, trying to just have it not kill you, right? you not kill it, <laughs> it's not going to think about losing weight, yep. right? It's going to hold on to that weight. That's right. Yeah, I like that one. Yep. I look at the body like I, I, I had an, ex, uh, uh, an example told to me a while ago, and I've, I've stolen it and I use it all the time. The human body is like a fire. Mm-hmm. Like our metabolism is a fire. Mm-hmm. And how do we make a fire bigger? 
we make a fire bigger by adding fuel to it. You stole it from me. Not taking fuel away. <laughs> Shh. You have my permission to use it. Shh. It's not trademarked. Shh. It's absolutely right. It's true, though. Right? It is mm-hmm. true. Yep. You don't put out a fire. Did I mention that the things. person I stole it from is a very smart, wonderful <laughs> oh, human oh my being? Gosh. <laughs> there you go. That's all you ever have to do is say go. that disclaimer yeah. before you use my line. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you're the best. That's super good. Awesome. Helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. We're putting that one to rest and we're never going to talk about it again. I promise. Perfect. Perfect.